What is up everybody, it's Larry back with you and today I'm bringing you some more practical data solutions. Today's focus is gonna be on the Mac and the gray screen at startup that you can sometimes get. I'll show you a couple steps to walk you through that gray screen issue, as well as a few steps to get you through some harder, more complex problems. So if you try to boot up any of your Macs, whether that's an iMac, MacBook Pro, like what I have here, a MacBook, a MacBook Air, literally anything running Mac OS, you could come across that gray screen at startup. Don't worry about it. We'll have some easy steps to get you through that. So when you see this gray screen, you're probably going to think you're all alone because Macs never have a problem. Well, that's not true. Mac problems are actually more common than what you would think. So before you start blowing a bunch of money by taking your Mac to a technician at one of those places, let's just run through a few steps to get you through these issues. So before we get into this, it's important that you understand there is some common reasons that this gray screen happens. Being familiar with this frozen startup will help you in the future. So if you end up getting a new MacBook in a few years, you don't have this problem for a while, you can always refer back to what we're gonna talk about and it'll get you through. I put together some well-known reasons that your MacBook could have that gray or even black screen during startup. Chances are you have one of these issues with your system. Okay, so don't beat yourself up because this seems like a pretty obvious one, but outdated firmware. So we've all been there. We have that little red icon telling us that we need to update and we just don't do it. But just so you know, those updates are important, not only for safety things, but to make sure that your Mac runs smooth i.e. like having that gray screen at startup. Updates that Apple pushes out to their Macs will address these kind of issues. So always make sure you have the latest firmware and updates going on your Mac. Another one is loss of memory or disk space. This, just like the updates, is something you should not ignore. You may not be aware, but it's possible your Mac may not be running on the recommended disk space or memory. This is especially true if you just installed a new version of Mac OS. If that's the case, your system obviously won't be operating at maximum capacity, which just means it could fall victim to errors like the gray screen. Another one's malfunctioning software or apps. Most operating systems, macOS included, have an auto startup list. Apps found in the directories reserve the permission to start themselves up once your system boots. If these apps start to malfunction, it could result in a gray screen at startup. A faulty startup drive is another one. Before you can even access the main interface of your macOS, you will have to switch your Mac on and get past the boot screen, right? So what do you think will happen when the drive the operating system is installed on malfunctions due to a software or hardware damage? The drive won't even be recognized, let alone bootable. And you know what comes next, don't you? Well, you should if you've been paying attention. That's when you get that gray screen of death. Follow the steps that I'm gonna talk about next and it should be able to help you get away from your gray screen slash startup slash issues with your Mac. First solution I have for you, get rid of any external peripherals. So even if you have an older Mac, you have stuff plugged in, not plugged in, you know, hard drives, mouse, whatever. Newer ones like the MacBook Pro I have here, you live that dongle life. So you have to have a dongle for everything you plug in. Take all that stuff away. If you have an iMac or some type of tower, just have it plugged in, have your mouse and keyboard, and that's it. If you have a laptop, unplug everything, your power cord, everything, set it right in front of you and just have it as a lone wolf sitting there ready to be worked on. Of course, before you unplug anything, obviously you're gonna wanna power down your device. So turn off your MacBook Pro, turn off your iMac, unplug everything, start it back up and see if the issue's still there. Next, you can use the disk utility. It seems like the disk utility can handle just about every issue you have on your Mac. Disk utility is super nifty. It's probably one of my favorite utilities on the Mac, hands down. Launch it and run it, and it's pretty much gonna tell you if you have any issues on your Mac or not. Press on your Mac's power button until it shuts down. Start it up again by pressing Command and the R keys. You'll see the OSX utilities appear. Navigate to Disk Utility and click on it. Look to the left and you'll see the list of drives on your Mac. Select the default one your Mac OS is installed on and select Verify Disk. You can find the options in the bottom right of the page. Next, you can try to utilize a safe boot. Safe boot lets you boot up your Mac and get rid of some small errors or different things that are plaguing your Mac. It prevents such issues from running in the first place so your Mac OS can run as effectively and clean as possible. Press down on your Mac's power button, 
hold down the shift key and don't let go until your Mac restarts. Safe boot will kick into action. Press these keys, shift plus command plus V. While this is going on, you can view the verbose mode and the status that the safe boot is currently in. Wait until you see your desktop is visible again. It should be looking just as it was before the gray screen. From there, proceed to start your Mac through the Apple menu at the top left of your screen. Solution four. Now this one may sound a little bit more intense. So it's resetting the PRAM and the NVRAM. Maybe some persistent settings are stored in the NVRAM. This might sometimes be caused by buggy third party apps, but there's an easy way to get around this. Hold down command plus option plus P plus R. Hold these keys down for about 20 seconds. If you didn't get the timing correctly, this won't work, but that's not a big deal. You can keep trying until you get it right. The key combination must be hit before the gray screen appears. Otherwise it won't work as desired. Try it again and try it again until you get it right. Here's another thing you can try. Recover your lost data on your Mac with recover it. Now this is an optional thing. This may not be for everybody, but if you're in this situation, this is gonna save if you followed all the other steps that we talked about and you're still having issues, you may need to do a hard reboot, reset your whole computer back to factory, and then bring it up again. That way you can get rid of everything that was in there. Wherever the little bug and little gremlin was, you're gonna wipe it out with a fresh, clean install. Recover it Data Recovery is one of the best data recovery solutions on the web, period. That's no exaggeration, that's not me just boasting. It is. It's a super lightweight app, super easy to use. That makes it a favorite to tons of people on the internet. I guarantee if you have to use it, I hope you don't have to use it, but if you have to use it, it's gonna be one of your favorites as well. So to use it, you're gonna select your drive. So it's not just effective. Like I said, it's super simple to use. And because it's so simple, that makes it appealing to people like me or even older people that don't really feel like messing around with their computer. They just want it to work. Right on the software's first screen, you'll see all the drives connected to your Mac, both internal and external. But you only need to select the default drive. Next, click on Start. Second step is gonna scan your drive. The software will initiate the scan process, but to make it even simpler and quicker, Recover it comes with some specific features that you really shouldn't ignore. What you can do is, in the software, you can actually just choose to recover certain file types or recover everything. And to get to this, it isn't some command you have to put in. All you have to do is check a little box or don't check the box. How much easier can it possibly get? When a scan's done, you'll have a list of all your lost and reformatted files. So recovering it is just as easy as deciding which ones you wanted to look for. All you have to do is tick the ones that you want to recover because you may not want to recover everything or you highlight it all and recover everything. Super simple, super easy, boom, done. Once you select what you want to recover, it's easy. You can point it to the direction of an external hard drive, which is probably your best bet. That way you have it on something external. And then once you're done formatting your computer and getting everything back up you know, from a clean OS, then you can drop it right in using an external hard drive. So what did you think? Was this super helpful for you? I hope so. If it was, leave a comment down below. Let us know how this helped you. If you have any questions about using this, leave it down in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more awesome data recovery tips and tricks. We love to hear comments from you. It really keeps us motivated and going on making these videos. So that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.